Good afternoon, traders. How we doing on out there? Who's ready to get into another stock market movers? I'm excited to dive into today's show. Let's go ahead. Let's get right to it here. Um, let's talk about the topics that we'll talk about. ISM, non-manufacturing, PPMI coming in here. Triple BY, CFO, suicide, digital world acquisition, energy crisis, talking about natural gas and oil. That's going to be a lot of the focus on today's show. So if you came to hear about natural gas and oil, you came to the right spot here. We're going to talk a little bit about CVS acquiring uh, Signify Health, Cardinal Health, and the market outlook. We got some great guests, like always, at 115. We're going to be joined by none other than Genevieve Rockdactor, CEO of Grit Capital. And then we also got, of course, Thomas Hayes, chairman and managing member of Great Hill Capital. Excited to talk to him about some oil. And we'll talk to Genevieve about the overall market. Excited to go into it. Welcome to it, Stock Market Movers. I'm your host, Money Mitch, and welcome to the show. Let's get it started. There are three ways to make a living in this business. Be first, be smarter, or cheat. I can't help you cheat, but I can give you the informational edge to help you succeed in the markets. Welcome to Stock Market Movers. All the market moving headlines and expert opinions every day. They say money is the oxygen of capitalism, and I want to breathe more than any man alive. All right, traders, here we are back into the markets. Another week, a short one, this one, but of course, leading up to, of course, big reports next week. We get the CPI on the 13th, so all eyes open towards that. Now, what will happen in this in-between week, right? We need to keep watch on data coming out, and I know that there's a Fed speak. Fairman uh, Jerome Powell is set to speak on Thursday, so keep your eyes on that. We'll see what happens. And now let's talk about the topics today. Of course, we got the ISM non-manufacturing PMI number to come out. Let's talk a little bit about that. You guys can see here, um, we actually got a 56.9 reading, an estimate of 54.8, and a prior of 56.7. Now, if you took a look around 10 o'clock, we actually got a a little bit of a pull down when this number first hit, but then a quick reversal from those levels. You guys can see here on the SPY, right at 10 a.m., this was right here. This one, this hit. We came down towards the low, but then reversed there off the 390s, bouncing a little bit here. So this is better than expected numbers and just shows what? Well, this shows room for the Fed to continue hiking into a strong economy. Numbers like this non-manufacturing number just shows us more that the economy isn't as weak as some may see it. And this could lead to, of course, the Fed just announcing more and more hike as they're trying to get this inflation number going down fast in the right direction. Of course, this is the biggest thing to keep on watch. How do they battle and will they turn around if they start to see, of course, deteriorating uh, economic conditions? But right now, it doesn't look like this economy is in rough conditions. Uh, good number there on the PMI number. All right, getting through that, let's talk about, of course, let's get into really quickly uh, the Bed Bath & Beyond news. Of course, it's not something that you want to hear. Um, and as investors, I think you need to start questioning if this is a stock that you want to be a part of, even those quick traders. Do you want to be a part of a stock that uh, information like this is coming out? And it just seems like it is now that I would actually kiss Triple B Y goodbye from this. I think moving forward, you probably won't see the rip, but that's just my outlook, right? You guys is, uh Deserve your own opinion, like always, and follow that own opinion. Uh, but let's take a look at the chart. To me, this is going to be the end here of Triple B Y as it is coming down here towards 717 and looking like it wants to come right back to where it started from the 577 levels, the level that I'd be watching. And from there, will Bed Bath and Beyond survive? That's the question here. We'll see what happens. Definitely not a trade that I'm going to be looking at today by any means. All right, getting out of that, there's also talk, of course, of digital world acquisition. Let's take a look at DWAC and how it's trading today. 
It is down on the news, of course. This is uh, reports here that uh, shares are down because it's trading lower, reporting suggesting that the shareholders have rejected the special uh, pr uh, proposed acquisition a purpose. Of course, this is a proposal to go ahead and extend the time that they could actually close the transaction and extend the deadline for uh, by a year. Of course, this is for the merger with Donald Trump's Trump Media and Technology. And you guys seeing it get hit hard now down towards $20. This one was at one point $100 and has just slowly leaked out since then. And every time that it's popped up, I feel like that has been an opportunity to short. And this just looks like a company that isn't going to actually go through. And it was more of a rumor. And now that the news is out, it's kind of uh, heading down right now. I mean, this could eventually get down to zero. We'll see what happens. Not a stock that I'd be trading by any means, but something that I definitely think caught some moving attention. So that's why we're mentioning it here. <laughs> Give me one second, guys. All right, I'm back. Let's keep it going here. Let's get into the energy crisis talk. And I think this is something that we've been talking about here on Stock Market Movers for weeks now. What would happen to Nord Stream 1 when we get the shutdown? Of course, we started getting some hardball played, right? Um Last week, what did we get? Well, last week we got uh, Gazprom halting the gas flow on Nord Stream 1, citing a gas leak here, uh, providing no time frame for when supply would be restarted. This is something that we've been watching very closely here on Stock Market Movers. You guys know I've been waiting to see what happens with natural gas. Will we get that spike going into winter? It looks like we've gotten it, but still, we haven't gotten the follow through this on today. And so that's kind of interesting to note. Now, what happened today, right? Let's get into some of those. Now, Gazprom is saying that the ball's in Siemens Energy Court. And so pretty much trying to pass the buck on, right, that it's not Gazprom that these problems and issues are coming from. Well, let's take a look at that. Let's see if that is really true, right? I mean, this is something that I would keep on watch. Um, let's take a look here. As you're seeing, of course, uh, Gazprom saying now that they will not resume pumping until S Siemens Energy repairs faulty equipment. Gazprom Deputy Chief Executive uh, told Reuters on Tuesday, of course, this comes after them just battling and telling us that it was a, a leak, right? And, and now that sent gas prices going up. But of course, what happens here? Now it becomes kind of a game of a battling he said, she said kind of thing. And it's interesting to me to see that UNG is actually down right now. This is an interesting uh, kind of note to find out. I mean, was it a buy the rumor, sell the news kind of event on the daily? Could have been that, right? Could have been everyone buying into the rumor and then now selling into the news. But we'll see if this can continue down if we're going to have really energy crisis mode in Europe, right? And just to kind of add to some of these uh, conversations, right? Now you're hearing comments like uh, Bloomberg reporting that the incoming British prim Prime Minister, uh, Liz, is drafted plans to freeze energy bills for UK households. This is massive, right? I mean, if they're just going to freeze the bill, of course, somebody has to pay up for it. In the long run, doing what? Increasing inflation in the long run. So, we need to keep an eye out to see what happens in that UK situation. It's going to affect Europe in the long run. And of course, we get some oil news, right? Oil, um, we can go to USO to maybe take a look at it or maybe XOM to take a look. It was going up in the pre-market. Now it has been down in the intraday action. But OPEC stepping in here and talking about cutting production about 100,000 uh, barrels per day. After in October, just last month, uh, just last month, OPEC had agreed to raising oil outputs by 100 barrels, 100,000 barrels per day. So what does that show us there? A little flippy floppy in the oil market. And that's kind of normal things to hear from. Also, you're hearing what mentions out there that uh, about the Russian cap, right? The Russian cap on oil. And will this kind of go through? What will happen? 
Well, Russian's energy minister thinks that any actions to impose a price cap will lead to a deficit on the initiating countries and will increase price volatility. And so this is something that we need to keep on watch. We'll see what's going on in oil. And it's an interesting situation now. Does it take that next step up? That's what I'm going to keep on watch. Uh, stocks like USO is another area that I'm kind of watching to see if we can get that lift. But of course, XOM is one that's on my radar. Will it come back on up towards 100 this week? And we'll see. Take a look at the weekly, right? Weekly pulling back right into that week. I think we get a move back above 98. We're looking good for the 100. We'll see if we can actually make that move in XOM. And does the news actually start following kind of the tape, right? A lot of this kind of negative action in oil um, is something that now if we're cutting production, right, and we're not looking to increase production, is this kind of more of a game just to play with the price and play with some st stabilization? Uh, here in the oil price, or is this really going to cause a spike in the long run? It's something to keep on watch. All right, catching up with you guys in the chat. What's going on out there? How are we doing out there, guys? Tupperware taking a licking. I see you out there. Blind Trader, how are we doing? FinTech in the toilet. Chart review on PayPal and Affirm. I got you, Turbine. I'll get into that after the show. I'll make sure that I leave some kind of... Uh, ticker time here for you guys after i get through some of these headlines all right let's keep going btc probably coming down with the market now let's go towards the next headline that i had which was a cvs headline of course we talked about cvs when jim craner mentioned this pick last week and i think he might have been seeing what happened here as of course cvs stepping up saying that they'd acquire signify health for eight billion thirty dollars and fifty cents a share um they did have an analyst call at 8 30 so i was wondering how that went i didn't see too many headlines coming from that uh signify health let's see what happens now does it continue on its up path of course this was already moving before prior to the action and had already gotten the rumor that had gotten this spike to begin with. So now it's kind of in no man's land. I would just pay attention to see what happens from it here. Does it go back through 28 or back through 31 on the upside? We'll see what happens. All right, let's keep going here. 109 in just a few minutes, we'll be joined into our first interview. Want to get into what was hot and what was not after that. So let's keep going through the headlines out there. I saw Cardinal Health, right? Cardinal Health. Uh, is getting some move out here. Um, that's Cardinal Health is, uh, let me just do one thing. I can take a look at it right here. CAH, sorry about that. Uh, CAH, Cardinal Health getting that nice little push on up and then now pulling on back. Is this a nice buy the dip opportunity as you're seeing Cardinal Health pull on back here? Of course, what happened? Well, Cardinal Health entered a cooperation agreement here um, with Elliot, of course, Elliot has been really active. Um, Elliot Steve Barg will join board of directors. Elliot said that they've taken a large position in the company, and it's something to keep on watch, right? When we've gotten these activists in the stock, it's given it lift. Today, it's actually pulling on back. We'll see if it kind of catches the bounce and gets back towards 71 on the daily. There was some resistance right above 70. Let's see if it comes right back towards that level after a quick pullback after it was trying to push through 72. All right, let's keep it going here. What's going on out there? Zunaid's call for a test of the low of the day was on point so far. Yeah, I mean, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't a bad outlook at all. The spy coming on down here, definitely testing down right back towards the lows. And so just be careful, guys. It could take that out, and we could see some continued downside action. The spy has been really weak today, even when it got some bounce. NVIDIA couldn't hold that bounce, and it's right back down here. So we could see some continued downside action. Quack the duck. Quack the duck is out of here. What the quack is going on? Uh, I see you, Quack the duck, uh, talking about Apple spiking after this week's event. Well, you're talking about the Apple 14 event that will be coming on Wednesday for Apple. Not a bad way to keep on watch. I would look at this play in Tuesday. Tuesday today, has it closed? Does it close into the red? All right. Does that close into the red? Now let's look for Wednesday turnaround. 
If we do get a red day today at Apple, I'd be looking for the turnaround tomorrow. And of course, you're going to need a nice spike in the SPY, right? If it can hold down here towards the low, on the low end of the daily, then we get a bounce back tomorrow. This is something to keep on watch. We'll see what happens. I would definitely be looking either if Apple closed in the red, look for SPY to come back into the green tomorrow or Apple to come back into the green tomorrow with, of course, the iPhone 14 release that we'll go ahead and try to capture. We'll see what happens on that one. I think it's something interesting to keep on watch. We'll see if we get that cut down or not. Now let's go ahead. Let's get into the overall market. Um, what was strong today? I think we'll save what was hot and what was not for after the uh, guest here. But I did want to take a quick look to see if anything got back into the green. And it looks like nothing is in the green here from the open as it's been kind of a tough day. The spy coming right back down. Will we hold here at the low of the days? Low of the day right now towards 380, 388.42s. And we're gone down fast from that 391. Definitely a downside action there in the market. And leadership, not showing much strength here. Maybe some health names up today, but a lot of the leadership down here, uh, Microsoft, Apple, uh, Google, Amazon, all looking down here. And Amazon trying to fill in that gap. We've talked about this shadow zone for a while. Would it fill in the shadow zone? We first drew this. Uh, on the 19th of August. Now we're really starting to come back through here as we're really starting to see this come back. We'll see if it gets down there towards the closing of that. I think uh, the high there is 122.84. So let's see if we get towards that 122.84 on Amazon. All right, that's going to do it for our outlook here on what's moving on out there. We're going to go into our first interview coming on up like always. That's what it's all about here on Market Movers. We try to get to the headlines and, of course, the expert opinions to keep you guys in the informational edge. Let's go ahead and get to our first interview here. We're going to go and get in here with Genevieve Rockdeck, the CEO of Grit Capital. Let's go ahead and bring her on here. All right. Welcome to the show, Genuine. Hey, great to be here. How are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. I'm doing better than the stock market, it seems. That <laughs> Keeps is zigzagging true. around. Hey, but I, you're the person I've heard the most say that, you know, this is the only place where shoppers run away from the discounts, right? I mean, this is this seems like an opportunity here if you look at it is a discount, right? Um, let's talk first about the overall market. Where do you see us? Do you see us taking out the lows? Yeah, I, I actually do, unfortunately. So oh. I am I am I am a long-term bull. I, I okay, have one here right. on my desk here. Um but near term, yeah, things are things are pretty choppy. I think uh, we are in a you know bear market rally here. Um, just looking at some data this morning, you know the S and P has been below its two hundred day uh, moving average for over hundred days now. This is Ooh. the longest streak since the financial crisis. Um, yeah, and I think look, the bear market rally was driven by a few things, right? Q two was actually better than most people feared. Um, we've had energy prices sort of peak out here, at least in North America. I know in Europe, still a big problem. Um, and that 10 year yield came down a bit from the 3.5 down to 3%. Um, and fund managers have really low exposure right now. They have really high cash levels and I think hedge fund leverage is at the lowest it's been in, in five years. So all these factors led to, you know, a bit of a, a bear market rally in, in July and August. And, uh, now it's been three weeks of <laughs> nonstop downside. So yeah, I think I think what we've heard from the Fed is they're going to keep hiking interest rates. They really want to make sure that not only do they stop inflation from going any higher, but they want to bring it down. So I think you're going to get, you know, 75, maybe 50, 50 to 75 base points increase uh, in September. Um, and then probably they're going to, you know, taper a little bit on, on the raising. And then some people are talking about maybe cuts into the end of 2023. But I think you know, rates are going higher um, and, you know, we're all having to deal with the the new reality here of just a lot of uncertainty in the market. 
That's true. Of course, the question comes, uh, has inflation truly peaked? And, you know, there's still the battle out there. Um, we've gotten some data to show us of some peaking action. Do you feel inflation's truly peaked? Uh, at least in, in North America, it has. Again, in Europe, you're seeing just like natural gas prices um, and power prices in general continue to just sort of skyrocket. And that's an issue. But at least in North America, we have seen, um, I think we, we have probably seen a peak. Um, you, you see that in, you know, the agricultural numbers, energy prices, oils come off like quite a bit. I've been very negative on oil for the last couple of months telling people not to chase this trade um, because I did fear that oil was going to come off and you know I don't always get them right but this one <laughs> I did and I stayed away from this trade as a lot of my viewers um, know um, but yeah I think inflation probably probably has has peaked in North America I would say all right. Now, my next question would be, of course, if we're getting kind of this downside move and uh, stocks are at kind of a discount, of course, you're looking at maybe taking out some June lows. But in the long run, what are some stocks that you feel have gotten in such a discount that these are opportunities, especially for the long term trader? Mm, so overall, my view is, is the stock market like, you know, look back over 100 years, your returns seven to 10 percent if you include dividends right annually. So. This U.S. stock market has survived literally every crash, every recession, every world war, um, everything you could throw at it. So long term, for especially for new investors out there, I know that 2022 has been quite a change from 2021. 2021 was, you know, throw a friggin' you know dart at a board and everything was going up, and 2022 is more like, hey, we're just surviving from a massive party we had last year, and now we're all surviving this hangover, but. The reality is the stock market is more typical uh, like what we're seeing this year than what it was last year. And so, um, yeah, you have to really have a long term view on these things and really do the opposite of what your emotions kind of tell you to do. So last year it felt really good to buy stocks. But in fact, obviously, as we've seen now, not the greatest decision um, right now, it feels awful to buy stocks, but it's probably the best time to buy stocks like dollar cost averaging in, um, not calling right now is exactly the, the perfect spot. Um, but that's what I always recommend is dollar cost averaging. And in terms of finding like really beat up stocks right now, I, that's not really what I do. Um, I like to own really solid companies and dollar cost average into them. So you know, one that I really like right now is a company called Crown Castle Corporation, CCI, um, on the U.S. Stock Exchange, a $75 billion market cap company. And why I really like them is they are the largest provider of shared communication infrastructure in the United States. So they own something like 40,000 cell towers and uh, 80,000 root miles of fiber. So basically the idea here is as you and I use more of our cell phone, use more of our internet, use more data, you download more video, um, you know, just data usage is just only going up with, with 5G and, and AI and everything that we do. Um, you know, over the last 10 years, more mobile data is up 100x and I don't see this slowing down at all. So this is, this is the theme I really like, and I really like the types of contracts that this company has and how they generate revenue. So they have deals with carriers like AT&T and Verizon. And so in these contracts, they're long term. So you have visibility on cash flow, and then they also have escalations in them. So as a cost of building these towers and laying down uh, this, this infrastructure increases, they have escalations in these contracts to protect them. Um, and then thirdly, I like it because it's a large cap and it's a lower volatility stock. So I always look at the beta of a stock and see like how much does it go up and down relative to the stock market. And this is about a 0.6. So it should move up and down 40% less. And I like to own these low beta stocks in sort of uncertain times like here. Um, and the stock has outperformed the S&P over the last you know five to 10 years is compounded at about 14%. So a nice, nice steady eddy here uh, on the large cap. Side. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like, you know, sometimes uh, the not sexy play can be a play that can make sexy money, really, at the end of the day, because uh, it's been tough to find plays like this, but especially a play that's been going sideways in the market like we've been, uh, not a bad thing to see, right? Oh, I love the more boring, the better. Making yeah, money definitely. slowly, <laughs> making money slowly is what it's really about. Um, and, and unsexy is actually sexy in the long run. I'd rather compound slowly, um, you know, than 
you know, get in some of these meme stock situations, which would yeah. be actually pretty funny tomorrow. GameStop's reporting. I just saw that. Um, but yeah, and like the horrible news over the weekend from the CFO of Bed Bath and Beyond. Um, uh, anyways, yeah, I, I I talk a lot about the meme stock stuff and the crypto yeah. stuff and these small caps and and all that. And and there is a place to do it in your portfolio if you're interested in it. But I always advocate for using the 80-20 rule. So 80% of your capital should be invested in these sort of crown castle corporation situations, which are large cap, uh, you know, compounders, uh, cash flowing, dividend paying, and then go have fun with your the other 20% of your portfolio. But position control is very, 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 very important. Um, so important, especially yeah. when you, once you're dealing with, you know, a, a, some, a, a lump of money, you really got to know how to position size in to be accordingly to your risk. Um, now, last thing I'll ask is uh, if you're looking at us coming back down towards the low, is there any shorts that you would be thinking of? This is oh. something that doesn't get talked about often. Anything no, that you I see coming say- down, downside? I did see a funny tweet this morning. I guess Ah. Leonardo DiCaprio has a new girlfriend who's 22 years old and he's, (laughs) he always breaks up with his girlfriends as soon as they turn 25. So people were like, Uh I want to buy puts on that. And I'm like, (laughs) it's not really something you can trade. But anyways, um, no, I don't really, I'm not a short, I don't short. Um, it's just not, it's not in my repertoire. I'm like a long-term bull. Um, and so, yeah, I'm not, I'm not on the, the short side of things, but I can, I can tell you about a small cap that I do like as well. Um, Let's go. Let's get a little bit of gold. What do you got for us? Okay. I'll tell you. So this is a, this is a conservative small cap company. It's called storage vault SVI on the Toronto stock exchange, 2.3 billion market cap. Um, I've owned this company for, for a few years. Uh, I first highlighted it to my subscribers in November of 2020. It was about 380 a share then. Right now it's around six bucks, but self-storage is like a super un, unsexy business, super conservative, but the returns are really sexy. So they're the largest self-storage company in Canada. They own over 200 locations, about 11 million square feet. Um, it's a very highly fragmented industry. So the top four players in Canada control like 15% of the market, meaning the rest is owned by like mom and pop operators. And so Storage Vault has been rolling up and buying and consolidating the space. And in terms of self-storage versus other REITs, it's actually higher ROI and lower volatility um, sector compared to other REITs over the last 25 years. And so it's just like, it's a great asset to own. And just to put it into perspectives that people can understand, a facility that's about 100,000 square feet uh, only takes three employees to run. And, uh, and so it's very low capital intensity. And so their margins are really high, about 60% net operating, net operating margins. So it's a really amazing business. And it's also recession proof. Like if you look at the self storage industry in the U S and compare it against the REIT index, it's outperformed 11 of the last 14 years, including two recessionary periods in 2008, um, 2009 and 2020. So Recession proof is for those who believe we're in a recession. Um, and yeah, it's got big institutional ownership now. It's about, like I said, 2.3 billion market cap, lots of capital available to do further acquisitions. I think they've got access to about 200 million in capital. And um, as things are tough here for these mom and pop operators, because obviously, you know, the cost of capital, the cost of debt is going up. I think it'll be an opportunistic time for them to continue to 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 acquire. So I like this one a lot. All right. Excellent, Jen. And uh, just to kind of give some viewers some insight, where could they find more of you if they want to go ahead and follow you along? Uh, on Twitter is probably the best spot at GR Dector on Twitter. Um, we've also got a newsletter on Substack. We're the number one free finance newsletter on Substack. So you can check us out there under Grit Capital. And uh, yeah, we also do a live stream on Benzinga every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern time, myself and Robert Ross. And we just talk about the stock market and what's going on and our takes and um, our stock picks of the week. So Perfect. you can catch me there. Excellent. I'll make sure to include the most recent uh, episode right there in the description so you guys can just click on it and check it on out. Thank you for joining us today, Jen. Okay, amazing. We'll talk Definitely. to you soon. Excellent. All right. That's going to do it for the first interview there. And uh, I like a a little cheaper name there and definitely public storage. I mean, just look at the last two years, see what's happened towards that stock. We'll see what happens there. Let's keep on going. U-Haul is always interesting. I mean, you can't go wrong with those plays. They definitely have been going on up and low employee and capital and uh, 
kind of business to run. And I think those are the important parts here. You're not seeing them hire like 50 people, right? Like a lot of people are having to do is hire and hire, hire and pay more. Well, these are usually run by two or three people. So you don't need that many to run kind of a public storage. We'll see what happens there. Let's keep going into some other stocks out there and some headlines. Let's go into what was hot and what was not. And let's see what's moving. Uh, this is where everybody can go ahead and follow along. If you guys got a ticker, you guys saw a big make a big move, throw it up in the chat. I'll make sure to go ahead and talk about it. All right, so real estate, uh, kind of the leading sector towards the upside, but it's not actually going towards the upside. It's actually going down right now. And so tough, tough move there. Utilities also in the red today. So I didn't expect to see that happen. Definitely getting a little bit of a drag down. After they were in the green at some point today, they were getting a little bit of a lift, but now turning back down here, the utilities getting a little bit weaker. Industrial is also weak there, but what is the weak the most is energy. Energy pulling on back here, and we thought that maybe these were getting some lift today. They were looking like they were trying to hold here, but now pulling on back fast here. We'll see what's going on out there. PBR, probably one of the hardest hit down there, about 5% down on that one. And it got down fast here from 1450s in the pre-market down there towards 1375. A lot of these getting hit down. We'll see what's going on out there, but definitely energy with a hard downturn there. And just be careful and on even cheaper names like Tell. Oh, Tell just got a nice lift. What happened there? Just want to catch that one. Been keeping an eye out on Tell as it's getting some lift here. Looks like I'm uh, looking to see if there's some news out there. No, I don't see news, but definitely just got a spike. So keep this one on your radar as it's coming back on up. This is one that I will keep on watching. And one that I've been watching is also INDO now with Tell moving on up. Keep this one on your radar. We'll see what happens today. Tell is definitely one that I've been watching on the daily move. Look at that daily push back now. We'll see if it can get through that 475 here towards the left. All right, uh, Fubo NFL deal, giving it a push. Let's take a look there. Fubo, of course, has been trying to kind of do more of the betting out there and, and really bring betting towards their platform. Uh, getting some lift today. I don't know if this will continue them to keep on going on up, but let me see if there is actually a, a deal with the NFL or anything there. I didn't see too much mentioned there. Ah, it doesn't look like too much there. Even though it could get some lift, it's not really stock that I'd be watching I'd be watching more DraftKings on that pullback for the nice NFL push, but we'll see what happens there. Consumer cyclical also getting hit hard. What is getting hit the most? Auto and truck dealerships really getting hit hard today. CarMax getting hit hard as, of course, the used car sales are starting to turn around there and probably not getting as many sales as they would want. Carvana, what's going on? Well, it's been pulling back fast there. So keep your eyes on these. These are turning back around. Lodging to the downside, the reopening trades, not holding on here. CCL, H HLT, you know, Hilton, all these kind of turning back around. It's danger, danger for these names as they keep hitting through the lows. All right, we'll see what else is going on out there. But definitely even the airlines can't hold right now as you're seeing them definitely get hit hard. Uh, UA, ULCC coming back down. Even Airbnb, I was taking a look at it, and it just can't hold on right now, looking like it wants to come back through the 110 versus up through the 120. Um, and let's take a look at what else is getting hit hard. Financial services down big. Let's take a look at the global, the big boys. JPM, I was looking to see if maybe we'd get a little bit of a bounce. It's heading right back down towards the low. Bank of America back down. Wall, uh, Wells Fargo right back down. So even though these kind of got their bounce, they bounced up about 20%, have come back about 7 8%. We'll see if they can finally get a bounce back, but they've definitely been uh, down the last three or four or five days. So just be careful there with some of those banks. Basic materials, I was seeing coal up big in the pre-market. It did pull back here in the intraday. Let's see if it takes back off towards the close. Of course, one that I watch is BTU, We'll see if it takes the next step on up through the 26th towards 27, as it did get a little pullback, but needs to really start getting moving. Other stocks that had a pullback today to keep on watch is a stock like MOS. 
Um, of course, this pulled back, started making a move on Friday, pulled back today, didn't really break down through the, kind of this 5438 area. It's not a bad area to watch to catch the bounce there. We'll see if it can get back going tomorrow and make that move back on up. This is Mosaic MOS. All right, let's see what other ones are making moves here. Uh, I did see Steel being talked about. NUE getting some lift today. Also, uh, Cleveland Cliff getting some lift today. Also, remember, this one started to move when it started mentioning the $75 ton, and then it pulled right back down the next couple of days. It did this little lift, and then boom, smack down, right back down. So let's see if it can get back up through 18. If it gets back through 18, I'll be looking for a move back towards 20 on Cleveland Cliff. All right, appreciate you, Carly, uh, letting me know that I'm looking a little sharp. Uh, try not, not to look too bad here. You know, I, I try to uh, clean up a little bit for stock market movers in the morning. You know, we get it started a little bit, the trading action. Then we get a little bit more profesh. Let's keep, keep, keep going here. STLD catching a little bit of a bounce. We'll see if Steel Dynamics can make that move back up. But NUE not looking too bad. And, of course, U.S. Steel is one that we watch as this one has pulled back significantly. Let's see if it makes a move back there towards the gap there's a gap right above it here towards the 23s we'll see if it actually can make the move all right technology also down 0.88 and it seems like nvidia just can't catch the break even every time it tries it comes back and gets rejected at important levels so it just doesn't look like nvidia wants to hold right now and with that being mentioned TSM coming down fast. This is one that I was talking about shorting above 85 in the 88s. Now has come down fast, about 9%. I think that you could see TSM, especially if you see any China news, really take a wipe out. Um, definitely these stocks are going to get a bounce. Eventually, I have a feeling that these tech names get a spike back, right? Kind of a short squeeze action. But for right now, they keep cutting down through the lows. You got to be careful there. You don't want to get caught. Just trying to keep keep catching the bounce, keep catching the bounce, keep catching the bounce. You by the time the bounce actually happens, then you don't get in. That's when you'll see it kind of reverse. Just be careful out there. I am keeping these on my radar, but until Nvidia doesn't close green or doesn't really give us some real green action on, let's say the hourly, getting through, let's say the 140 on the upside, you gotta be careful in this name as it could take out the lows and continue on the downside action. I see 123s in reach. If this can break, 133s on the downside. So just be careful there. NVIDIA could keep coming down, and that could keep dragging stocks like AMD, keep dragging stocks like Qualcomm, keep dragging stocks like Marvell. So just keep these on your radar. We'll see what happens on these as they're pulling back fast. All right, let's keep going. Of course, uh, what was hot and what was not was the segment that we just got through. If you guys got tickers to call on out, definitely throw it on up. I did see someone mention a ticket earlier that I wanted to catch. It was uh, a firm. I see Zoom being mentioned. Zoom. Zoom just looks like a short to me. I mean, yeah, it could come back to fill the gap between 84 and kind of 95, but if it breaks down through the low of 80s, it could easily be back down to $60. Um, where is this one stop? I don't know, but I know the next stop for it, at least in the time short term being, will be closer towards 60. I think that's where you start seeing it go below the IPO price. And then from there, what happens to Zoom? It's just, it's hard to believe that this stock is at $80. And Kathy liked this stock back all the way up there at 400 five. This was almost a $600 stock, guys. And it's looking like it's coming back down to 60 We'll see what happens there. Zoom coming down fast. All right. What else is being mentioned out there? Can below. We'll see if it gets below uh, that 60 If uh, Zoom restates earnings below 40s, oof, we'll see what happens there. All right, let's take a look at some other stocks that are moving out there. I did see in technology solar up today. And so uh, this is one full disclosure. I am long one of these in the competition account. I don't know how much disclosure I really got to give on that because it's just a competition. But ENPH giving a nice move on back here. We'll look to see if it breaks out above 300. This is the one that I took today, guys. SEDG 
I took it down here towards the 270s. We'll see if it can get back towards the 280s. I'm looking for a move back up towards the 290s and 300 on this one. We'll see what happens on SEDG. Uh, First Solar also up today, not looking too bad. Run, getting some nice lift there. They're getting a little bit of that run action. Definitely sideways action pennant here. We'll see if this can hold. This doesn't look too bad on Sunrun. We'll see what happens in these solar names. Can they get that next lift and keep pushing? All right, let's keep on going. We'll see what else is moving on out there. Uh, let's get into Spy keeps pushing below 390. What's up? Spy doesn't want to hold right here. That's what's up. Uh, you look at my level that I have drawn out there, 390.34. Look at the hourly to the left. Look how you've seen a lot of wicks now starting to close there. Will we close this hourly candle there? So in the next 20 minutes, if we don't recover 390.34, I think we have another leg down towards the 385s. We'll see what happens there as we're really battling to try to get back above the 390s. Lulu, Lulu, let's take a look. Lulu had really good earnings, but uh, it did come back down there on Friday, coming back and catching the bid towards 312.01s. Not a bad level to look at here. If you looked at the daily, you could see it here. Was it going to come back into these levels? I was I was looking to see if we were going to get back into there. It's definitely a stock to kind of keep on your radar. Good little level to hold today as it's starting to push from that 320s. Now I would look for pullbacks slightly below 320s towards 31950s to maybe risk off those lows around there around the 312s. We'll see if we get the pullback. But Lululemon getting the nice lift today. Urban also getting some lift. Uh, if you're taking a look at some apparel stores out there making some lift, this one not looking too bad. Also got some other ones. Shoe Carnival getting some lift. GCO. These are not really stocks that I was looking at, but we'll see what happens. Ross was a one that I was taking a look at, maybe thinking about taking a shot on uh, from the lows, the 85, 74, back towards the 90s. It's sideways right now. What do you guys think about Ross? All right, let's keep going out there. We'll take a look at some other stocks in just a few minutes. We'll have our second interview today. We'll be getting into our interview with Thomas Hayes, chairman and managing member of Great Hill Capital. I always like talking to Thomas. He stays up with everything in the market, not just one area. So if you guys have a question about the overall market or just want to talk about a certain topic, Throw it up in the chat. I'll definitely try to catch it there and see if I can give the question to Thomas when he comes on up. All right, let's keep going here. Of course, let's take a quick look at the SPY. Will we kind of hold the 390s today? It's going to be a battle there. We'll see what happens there. Um, it's it's trying. It's trying its best to hold there. And I think, you know, one of the things is sideways action here is not a bad thing for the bulls at least. If you can keep holding those 390s, not break through Thursday's low, 390.04, not close below that. That will be a good sign as we kind of keep holding around here. This is the 61.8% retracement level here in the golden ratio, but uh, it'll need to kind of keep holding if it wants to be golden there. A close back above uh, 390.34s won't be a bad level to watch for either. All right, we'll see what else is going on out there. Visa getting a little bit of a bounce today. Wanted to take a look at the ARKK, see how the growth was doing right now. It's battling. There's some growth that's up and majority of it's down right here. Looks like um, Hood getting a little bit of a lift today. I'm not sure what this is going off of, but definitely not doing too bad. Too simple, getting a little bit of a lift. But as you can see, majority of her names in the deep into the red uh, what are the names that are deep into the red? Unity getting hit hard right now as it doesn't look like it's holding that 40, looking like it's coming really fast down towards those June lows. We'll see what happens there in Unity. Um, Roku also heading down there fast. Um, we saw this down gap kind of get filled up on the up move in Roku and right back down into that shadow. Now trying to crack through those lows there that we got on that low day. The low on that day was 62. We'll see if we crack 62 today. It's gone down there just before. We'll see if it cracks again here. Roku, not looking good. And of course, it's Tesla. Roku is not looking good here. Um, it's not going to be looking good here. 
for Kathy moving forward. We'll see what happens. Tesla's not looking too bad, at least holding above VWAP today, but uh, just slightly into the green there. We'll see if ARKK can hold on to the 40s today. All right, let's keep going here. Let's take a look on out there to see if some of these kind of tech names will be bouncing back or not. Looks like NVIDIA is the one that I've been keeping an eye on. This doesn't look like it wants to hold right now. I was looking for this one to kind of get the bounce, and now it's just looking weak to me. It looks like it wants to come right back down towards those low of the day, and we could take out those 133s. If I think NVIDIA eventually gets down towards the 130s, closer towards the 123 is what I'm looking for in NVIDIA. And it's It's been an interesting ride. I mean, NVIDIA has pulled back now from the highs about 60%. So I don't think anybody expected that starting out the year. All right. I'm sorry about the spam out there, guys. I got the spam. No worries, guys. I'll go ahead and I'll take care of it. Sorry about that, guys. All right. Appreciate you guys hitting the like on up. What else is moving on out there? I'm going to short GCT if it keeps spamming. Yeah, I feel like that, Brian. No worries. Sometimes when I feel people uh, kind of spam like a ticker there, I feel like doing the same. I'm like, yeah, I feel like shorting that now. Uh, there you guys go. I, I blocked them. Don't worry about it, guys. We'll get that out of here. Uh, like always, guys, if you guys got a ticker that caught your eyes in the chat, definitely throw it on up there, and I can always cover it. I did see someone talk about a firm. Uh, you guys know how I called a short call when we were up there by 39 and 40s. I got stopped out at 39, really close towards the high of the move, but this has just been leaking down, and one that I could see continuing to leak down towards the lows. It's down about 45% from its highs at 40 We'll see if a firm can kind of catch the bounce or not. It's just been red, 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 red days. Unless if I was a bull, I would need to see at least a green day close. But right now, it's just been in the red kind of bleak. All right, I'm going to get out of a firm holdings in a second. We're going to get into our interviews. I'm going to go ahead and play a Benzinga Pro promo. And in a few minutes, we'll dive on in here with Thomas Hayes. Introducing Portfolio Synchronization with your brokerage. Now you can securely connect your brokerage account to Benzinga Pro, opening a world of personalization. Screen lightning fast news just for the stocks you own. Set alerts for news catalysts that affect only the companies you care about. It's all possible with a simple click and a secure protective connection. Overcome uncertainty and connect your portfolio to Benzinga Pro today. All right, traders and investors, it's time to go ahead and get to the expert opinions. That's what it's all about, trying to keep in the informational ads. Like always, this is not financial advice, just educational, but let's get some education. Let's learn about what's out there from none other than Thomas Hayes. You guys know we've had him on before. One of my favorite guests, let's come back on. Welcome on, Tim Thomas Hayes, Chairman and Managing Member of Great Hill Capital. Great to have you back on, Thomas. Thanks for having me, Mitch. Always love to come on with you. Definitely excited to talk about the overall market, but I want to focus more on oil and natural gas to start off here. First, let's start off with oil. Of course, there's been some recent updates. I'm sure I'll let you go ahead and kind of talk a little bit about these. But how do you feel about the recent OPEC plus cut in production? By a small amount, but cutting. Yeah, it's it's token. It's basically a fist bump to uh, President Biden, uh, literally and figuratively. If you remember when when they visited, uh, that's how they greeted one another. Uh, what what's more interesting about oil is the fact that uh, the rig count is now approaching pre-pandemic levels. And while everyone's been focused on OPEC and Russia, no one's been paying attention to the fact that the U.S. producers are like, yeah, we like. 80, 90, 100 dollar oil, we're going to drill, drill, drill. And, and that's exactly what they've been doing. Uh, I think we're probably up uh, now approaching 770 versus 7790 pre pandemic. Uh, and, uh, and we're going to feel the effects of that. Demand's a little slower with the lockdowns every couple of months, uh, every couple of weeks in a new city in China. Uh, and in Europe, people getting hit with high energy bills because uh, Putin can turn off the pipeline anytime he wants to for maintenance. And, uh, um, you know, all the green advocates have figured out that, uh, 
you know, wind only works when uh, when the wind's blowing, and and you can't store that uh, that that energy. And solar only works when the sun is shining. So you do need to have uh, fossil fuels for the time being during the transition. Uh, and uh, UK is figuring that out with the new administration. Uh, the U.S. Uh, hasn't quite figured that out, but private equity guys who bought all the assets in the hole uh, in 2020 are figuring that out, and, and they've been drilling, and they're, they're bringing new supplies online. So the U.S. is in a very good shape. I mean, if you think about all the inflation expectations just a couple of years ago, as a matter of fact, I was looking at five-year inflation break-evens uh, just a few months ago in March. We're at three. 57. People were expecting inflation to be, th you know, 3.57 five years out. Now that has collapsed over the weekend to 255. Uh, this is this is almost the lowest during the pandemic period. So uh, the Fed has been very, very successful in talking down inflation expectations. And they're much more concerned with long term expectations because it affects behavior than, than short term in inflation rates. Now, do you think this Russian cap even matters if countries like India and China are not going to take part? It, well, that's it's been the same thing since day one. Russia's selling more oil than ever. India's buying it hand over fist. China's buying it hand over fist. They're buying it at discounts. They're filling up their strategic petroleum reserves while we're 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 uh, drawing down on ours, and and uh, and that's exactly what's happening. So I, I think that. Uh, uh, Brussels has done a good job of uh, ultimately hurting their constituents, which they have a, a tendency to do with overregulation and a disregard for impact on business and small business and everyday people. Uh, and they, they will reverse it. But uh, like all politicians, they tend to come to the right conclusion after exhausting all other possibilities. So uh, we're just going to have to wait for them to figure out what everyone already knows. Uh, that their policies are not going to work and they've got to find a way to, to have more energy and, and find a way to uh, take care of their people. All right. Now the question, and uh, a lot of people and investors are trying to weigh in on this, will kind of oil get back over the $100 a barrel mark? Or do you feel like we're just in kind of a, a range now? Yeah, I think we're in a range. I think that supply uh, from the U.S. is coming on pretty strongly. I think the uh, the Russia supply uh, is certainly getting bought up by India and, and China. So that's going to continue. Uh, demand is a little bit slower in China, although that's going to come online. So, I, I mean, I wouldn't be taking a bet. Everyone got excited about energy this year. No one was excited about energy in 2020. For me, it's not interesting. Uh, unless it comes down a lot, uh, then I would get interesting again. But in this range, I think you're just going to get chopped up and there, there are greener pastures to pay attention to right now. Now, moving to natural gas, of course, uh, the battle on out there in Europe right now with Gazprom, you know, first citing a leak, then now citing that it's as Siemens. Um, now, what do you feel that is kind of moving forward from here is going to happen with natural gas? Do you are you worried about the crisis in Europe kind of getting out of hand? Well, they're going to blink and they just don't know it yet. I mean, you know, Putin, Putin holds all the cards here. Uh, and uh, Brussels just hasn't figured that out yet. And they didn't uh, think this through before they got into this scenario. And now they're dealing with the consequences. And they think like every good regulator, you know, to every, uh, uh, you know, uh, to a guy with a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And Brussels solution, everything has always been regulate more, tax more, uh, be more stringent. And it's simply not going to work, work this time. You have to produce more. That's the secret to prosperity is production, not taxation, not regulation. It's production. And Brussels will figure this out. Uh, they're going to have to uh, allow more drilling. They're going to have to allow other ways to get hydrocarbons until the transition makes sense. I, I think everyone's on board that we want a greener, cleaner environment. But to try to do it all at once and to do it overnight uh, is just uh, uh, unrealistic. And, uh, and I think that they're getting a clear lesson. So they, they can either pray for a mild winter or they can adjust their policy, uh, but they can't have it both ways because sooner or later you see regime changes. You know, you saw it in the UK when people are unhappy, when food prices are high, uh, when energy prices are high, politicians get voted out of office. And as you know, everyone's politician, no, politician's number one job is to get reelected and they do so, uh, uh, you know, at all costs. So um, I, I'm pretty uh, sanguine that they'll get to some type of resolution, but there may be some choppiness and bumpiness uh, ahead of time with, with regard to energy. So to traders and investors, what I would say is 
if you're trying to game this out and guess if, if oil is going to go up $10 or down $10, like literally that goes in my too hard pile. Uh, I look for scenarios where the margin of safety has gotten so extreme, you know, in 2020 when energy went negative $30 a barrel, you know, that was a no brainer when you had Exxon at $30, $38, when you had, you know, range resources at a dollar and 61 cents, that's now $30 and change to that's when we want to be talking about energy. Now we want to be talking about things that uh, that are kind of left for dead that have a huge enough margin of safety, even if they push against you a little bit in the short term, you know, long term, you've got high quality assets that are that are going to be a lot higher moving forward. Excellent. Let's talk about those. Um, now, one thing that I've been looking at is, of course, is some opportunities now, of course, that are coming on down. But what's the next driver? That's one thing that I always look at and kind of watch your tweets on out there, Thomas, is what's going to drive us next? And do you feel that we take out those lows with that next driver? Yeah, I think consensus is that we take out the lows. We're not in that camp. Uh, I think the setup is pretty interesting and the positioning is very interesting because no one believed the 18.7% rally in the S&P off the June lows. Uh, so everyone was in cash. They were finally forced to buy at the top uh, in August, uh, the first couple of weeks of August. All these guys crowded in that didn't buy anything in June and July. And then, of course, the trap door has to open. It happens every single time for the Johnny come latelys with a 9% pullback now. This is a normal pullback and consolidation to shake out the weak hands. Uh, and when they've punished them enough, they're going to take a next leg higher. And I think we're going to finish the year higher from here. Uh, if we consolidate for another uh, few days uh, into the CPI and PPI print, so be it. But this has really uh, provided a temporary buying opportunity to buy high quality assets on sale uh, if you missed the, the rally off the June lows uh, a few months back. So you know, you're looking at uh, some of the positives coming in in terms of the inflation. Like I said, the five-year break-evens are now down to 255. That's huge. That gives the Fed a little breathing room to maybe not go 75, maybe go 50 this month or less. Uh, and the labor force participation rate, you know, because gas and food and energy is uh, very expensive. People have had to go back to work. That's, that's creating some slack in the labor market. Uh, average hourly earnings came in lower than expected. That's also bodes well for the CPI and PPI prints next week. But those are going to be the two most important numbers of the year. Uh, we think, uh, you know, consensus is they're going to be hot. We think they're going to be lower than expected. And that will give the Fed cover to do 50 or less the, the following week, uh, which will be viewed as a, a rate of change, uh, kind of like a pivot. Uh, they're no longer doing the extreme measures of 75. They're down to 50. And then maybe the next meeting's 25. Uh, and then we may, may be done for the cycle, provided that the uh, inflation data continues to cooperate. Now, of course, the last thing I want to leave off with is an opportunity maybe for investors to kind of keep their eyes on. Is there a certain sector or industry now that you feel has been beaten down far enough that we should keep our eyes on it? And of course, like always, make a choice on where we're going. But is there a sector or industry that's looking good now? Well, I think I think the key here, Mitch, is going to be high quality while it's on sale. So uh, I think if the Fed is going to be uh, going less aggressively than consensus currently imagines right now, uh, that means uh, uh, rates are going to start to come in, and that that creates a tailwind for some of the tech stocks that have uh, that have recently come back in. I'd go for the highest quality. You know, the, one of the most hated is Meta right now. Uh, Meta platforms. The thing is trading at 14 times next year's earnings. It's still going to grow at seven and a half percent long term growth rate earnings growth for the next five years. Uh, and if they can't get the earnings going on the advertising side, they can just cut spending in the metaverse uh, and turn those cash flow spigots on any time that they want. My sense is they're going to get it all to work. I would never bet against Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, many people have tried in the past when he didn't have mobile going and they said that was it for Facebook. And he always pivots. He always figures things out. And I think the other thing people are, are neglecting to keep in mind, they're saying advertising is down because the economy is down. But this is a political ad spend year. And that's not really correlated to the overall economy. When these politicians want to get elected, they run ads like crazy. And, uh, wow. and where are they going to run it? Other than the most, uh, the greatest advertising platform ever invented by man, which is uh, which is the Meta platforms, Instagram, Facebook, et cetera, et cetera. So I think that's an opportunity. I think you go into something safe and high quality in, in pharma like J and J, trading at 15 times next year's earnings. You get a 2.7 percent dividend while you wait. 
uh, and you've got a diversified business with the devices, with the, with the drugs and, and with the consumer products. Uh, so stuff like that. Uh, and then, you know, we, we still like our longer term uh, uh, plays in uh, biotech in China, which is now acting like a dead dog because of these lockdowns every couple of days. But this too shall pass. Uh, same thing happened in 1918 to 1920 with the Spanish flu. Even without vaccines, eventually it runs out of steam and, and uh, the virus has infected everyone they can and uh, people go on with their lives. And the same thing will happen with China. But in the meantime, they're jamming a ton of stimulus down the pipeline. And the minute those doors open and they stop playing around with these uh, ridiculous shutdowns, uh, you are going to see a boom there like you haven't seen before. Uh, and uh, over the next three to five years, that's going to be the place to be. And if you're not in yet, my best suggestion would be watch the dollar. Uh, if and when you start to see some dollar weakening, if, that, if the Fed starts to move at a slower pace like we anticipate in coming months, watch the dollar. The minute that dollar stops going up and starts to stabilize and even come down, that's when you want to get your emerging markets exposure, some high quality in, in China as well, uh, and, uh, and just hang on for a great ride for the next three plus years. It's going to be a home run. Well, perfect said there, Thomas, and I appreciate you bringing in a little bit of a flag there for all of us to keep on watch with the dollar. We'll keep watch on some of these high quality names and have you back on. Appreciate you like always, Thomas. Thanks, Mitch. All right. That's going to do it for our show today. I know that you guys enjoyed that as much as I did. I thought that was a great interview there. And one thing that I thought was really cool insight there that I was looking at was the meta comments because I've been looking at meta like I've been hearing the rumors about the ads but what could be bringing that ad spending up well there you guys have it that's why I like uh, staying up especially with analysts that kind of follow the story and are thinking a little bit bigger what could it be I think Thomas might have hit it dead on there uh, with the midterms coming on up, maybe ad spending comes back on up. So something to keep on watch as we've been seeing meta come up because I didn't think it was the snap news that just got meta just rolling on up there. So we'll see what happens with this. I hope you guys enjoyed today's interview. Like always, you guys can keep up with all the interviews that we do right here on Benzinga and Stock Market Movers is always about, and I try to do this always, is two experts to give you guys some good information to stay in the informational edge. Get to the headlines like always. And the last thing I wanted to take a look at was Bitcoin because I saw you guys mentioned in the chat there, you guys were all like, well, what's going on with Bitcoin? Well, it's taking a beating right now. Let's take a look here. Uh, Bitcoin now down there to 19 uh, 19, where, where do we get down there to? What was the low? Let me get the chart on up here. Uh, see if I can pull this on up here for us and we can take a look at the low. All right, so the low right now is 19.1, 19.100, pretty much really close to that, 19.01. So we'll see what happens. I think eventually, you know, Bitcoin might be coming on down and giving us an opportunity in the long run um, where do I see it kind of coming back to? I've talked about levels for plenty of times that I'm looking for a move back down closer towards 10,000. Uh, in the 11,000 to 10,000 range, that's where I would take a dip chance. But this is coming down fast today. Bitcoin and probably going to be dragging a lot of the Bitcoin stocks down. MSTR, I said, was one of the biggest short opportunities that I saw on out there. We drew this line to kind of look at that. And that was on the 19th of August. So 19th of August, I'm going to have to draw a circle on that day because I have a feeling this is going to be one of the biggest positions that I'm going to be looking at for the rest of the year, which was a short around 299, 300 there on MSTR coming back down to this line and then breaking it towards this here. We'll see if it gets down there towards uh, let's say towards the 150 level. And this looks like it's heading down fast. Mara also, uh, this one actually holding on well compared to the Bitcoin's move down there. So that's interesting to see that it didn't head down fast. All right, that's going to do it for me. I'll catch up with the guys in the chat. I see you guys, Easy Mike, Jay Rice, Beach Bum, uh, Burn Boris. Hey, it's good to have you guys in the chat. Haz. Uh, Muhammad, Mad Money. I hope you guys enjoyed today. Like always, I'm going to keep battling here to get you guys all the information I can bring you to keep you guys in the informational edge. That's what it's all about. I'm here to help you guys. So let me know in the comments after 
What do you want to see more or less of on this show? Do you want to see some more guest interviews? Do you want to see uh, some bigger focus on strategy? Maybe the top mover and the news with it. You guys let me know, like always. You guys run the show also. I'll see you guys next time right here on Stock Market Movers. Give the thumbs on up, and I'll see you a little bit later on At The Close at 3.30. We're going to take a little break now, and then we'll see you back at 3.30 on At The Close with, of course, Joel Conan. I'll see you guys next time right here on Stock Market Movers.